The circular economy tackles the root causes of global problems such as climate change. In fact, it enables the economy to become part of the solution rather than the problem. If we look at today's economy, it's predominantly take, make, waste. We take something out of the ground, we make something out of it, and then at the end of its life, we throw the majority away. It's a linear economy, it's constrained by its resources, and it creates very brittle supply chains, particularly as we've seen through the global pandemic. Within a circular economy, from the outset, the economy is redesigned. Products and materials are kept at the highest value and utility. We design out waste completely, and natural systems are regenerated. It's a much more resilient economy. If we look at the challenges around climate change, around 55% of CO2 emissions can be solved by switching completely to renewables. But the 45% that remain cannot be solved in that way. If we look at circular principles and apply those three principles to materials such as steel, cement, plastic, food and aluminium, we find that of that 45% that remains, around half can be saved. That's the equivalent of taking all global transport off the road and out of the air. So circular economy plays a really key role in solving many of the problems around climate change. But what it also does is it builds a more resilient economy. It solves some of the problems around brittle supply chains because we're less dependent on those raw materials brought across the earth to make those products. It's resilient, it's regenerative, and it really can work in the future, predominantly because it's driven by economics. In Benin, as in most developing countries, the economy, in particular in the so-called informal sector, is somewhat circular by necessity. The challenge is about how to turn that fact into a systemic framework for sustainable development. Currently, we have climate-friendly actions underway in agricultural and energy sectors, as well as in urban waste management, the three areas which hold the biggest potential for climate action as per our nation's NDC. For instance, the government is actively deploying the national plan adopted in 2018 to increase agricultural yields per unit of natural resources to mill land and water and fertilizer input, while preserving agricultural land and restoring already degraded ones, according to the avoid, reduce, restore paradigm. The goal is to achieve land degradation neutrality by 2030 by restoring 1.2 million hectares of degraded landscape, among other targets, and the outlook of the agricultural output over the past two years is promising in that regard. But climate change and biodiversity loss are the two critical and overarching but also intertwined crises we must address at all levels and the circular economy's resource efficiency framework provides a holistic approach for addressing both of them sustainably. In that regard, ecosystem restoration will vastly contribute. For instance, degraded soil are the world's most overlooked waste. But we do know that restoring the soils of degraded ecosystem has the potential to store up to 3 billion tons of carbon annually and in a cost-effective manner. As the world embarks this year on a decade for ecosystem restoration, my ambition and commitment are to promote and support the required transformation in governance systems to scale up and roll out action that advance ecosystem restoration and circular economy in the context of sustainable development. Thank you. I'm delighted to talk to you today on the special occasion of the World Circular Economy Forum and Climate. Over the past decade, the World Economic Forum has been driving the circular economy agenda in collaboration with many partners and leaders around the world. Why is that? Well, because the circular economy offers a positive economic and innovation opportunity, but also because it's a critical lever for decarbonisation, getting to net zero and tackling all forms of pollution. We've helped drive this agenda through three dimensions. First, we've been building public-private leadership commitment and collaboration 
for example, by launching the platform for accelerating the circular economy in 2018. Second, we've been driving material value chain transformation for plastics and electronics, to name just two examples, through the Global Plastic Action Partnership and the Circular Electronics Partnership. These draw together industry and governments to translate circular economy commitments in these value chains into practical action. And third, we've been scaling innovation through our Scale 360 initiative, because the fourth industrial revolution offers incredible potential for new technology solutions and circular entrepreneurship to emerge around the world. Now, building on this work, it's become increasingly clear to us that the circular economy is absolutely vital to closing the current greenhouse gas emissions reduction gap, particularly in harder to abate industrial sectors. These have so far been less engaged in the circular economy agenda, yet heavy industry accounts for about a third of global CO2 emissions. So, in 2021, a pivotal year for climate action, we have launched a collaboration on circular economy for the net zero industry transition, with support from the governments of the Netherlands and Japan. This will help identify and scale ambitious circular economy solutions that can fast track industry decarbonisation efforts. The World Economic Forum looks forward to working with all of you and collaborating in our collective race to zero by drawing the circular economy and the climate action agendas together. Thank you. The global environment is in crisis. We are in a downward spiral. We must transform fundamentally our socioeconomic system within 10 years to protect the Earth system. Based on this vision, the Center for Global Commons is working towards stewarding the global commons, the human's common property, in order to reduce the environmental impact of the economic system and to ensure the stability and resilience of the Earth system. This initiative consists of several components, measuring a country's contribution to socioeconomic transformation for sustainable development by index, presenting specific pathways through modeling, and promoting system transformation through effective coalition formation. The pilot version of the index was released last year. Circular economy transition is one of the keys in this approach, and the concept of circular economy coupled with climate change has a high affinity within the Center for Global Commons Initiatives. In addition to these initiatives, the CGC is committed to working with partners in the food, city, and textile sectors, as well as the chemical industry and other hard-to-abate sectors to contribute to the acceleration of the circular economy transition and to promote public-private academic partnership. From a regional perspective, we will also accelerate the circular economy transition in Asia by harmonizing the potential of Japan and Asia within the global context. Thank you. At Philips, we recently confirmed that we achieved our 2020 sustainability targets. We are one of the first health technology companies in the world to become carbon neutral in our operations. And we generate 15% of sales from circular products and services. We also delivered on our target to close the loop on all large medical systems that our customers are willing to trade in. This means we can repurpose materials in a responsible way and improve more lives without further depleting natural resources. In addition, we reached zero waste to landfill across all our factory sites. We are committed to acting responsibly towards the planet and society, and circular economy is central to our efforts to make the world healthier and more sustainable through innovation. 
guided by our comprehensive ESG commitments, we continue to raise the bar in sustainability. To minimize our overall environmental impact, we want to make sure our products last as long and are as energy efficient as possible. By joining forces with our customers, partners and suppliers, we aim to reduce our carbon footprint across our value chain in line with the 1.5 degree global warming scenario, while helping to create a sustainable and more resilient healthcare industry through our circular economy solutions. Within PACE, we continue to lead the Capital Equipment Coalition and accelerate the move to a circular economy together. Hello, my name is Leslie Johnson. I'm the chief exec of Laudis Foundation. We are a private foundation joining the movement to tackle the dual crises of climate breakdown and inequality. And we cannot do that unless we shift our current linear economic system to one that is circular. According to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, a circular economy can contribute up to 40% of the climate emission reduction targets for the highest emitting sectors. Circularity is clearly an opportunity, but we need to embrace it in the right way. A way that creates value and just and dignified jobs for all people. We at Laudis have embedded a circular economy lens throughout all of our philanthropic work. In the built environment, our partners are tackling not only the operational, but also the embodied carbon in the sector. And circular approaches help keep those materials and value in the system for longer. In fashion, our partners are tackling the take make waste nature of the industry by accelerating innovations on both the demand for and the supply of materials. And in finance and capital markets, our partners are building the will of policymakers and investors to accelerate and enable the broader shift to a circular economy. But we need to do more. As recovery packages get crafted by national governments around the world, we think there is an unprecedented opportunity to bring circularity into these discussions. But the window of opportunity is narrowing, and we collectively need to act. We at Laudis are honored to play our part. Thank you. At Veolia, we are very proud to have been a forerunner in inventing an economic model around the circular economy. Creating value with recycled material loops is indeed a real challenge. Circular materials do not have the scale of effect of virgin materials, and as a result, they are generally more expensive to reintegrate into the production systems. As we have to collect, clean, sort, refine, and adapt to the product specifications. Today, we generate more than 5 billion turnover, nearly 20% of our business in circular solutions. It's because we at Veolia have demonstrated to our clients, partners, and to the regulators that it is possible on an industrial scale that the demand is now becoming so strong. With regard to the circular economy and the climate change, we have specific commitments within the 18 KPIs related to our five stakeholders identified in Veolia's corporate purpose we have adopted in 2019. In plastic recycling, we want to increase the volume of plastic we recycle today by 50% from 400,000 tons to 600,000 tons per year by 2023. Knowing that one ton of recycled plastic represents 1.1 ton of CO2 avoided, we have thus a positive contribution to plastic pollution, resource conserv conservation, and climate change. Our ambition is to continue to innovate in the food chain and agricultural loops, particularly in the recovery of biomethane, water reuse, and the return of carbon to the soil. But also we want to innovate in electric batteries with, for example, the Veolia Solvay Renault partnership, and thus to demonstrate that we can achieve profitable economic models for all these new sectors, which is a condition for success of the circular economy. 
Hello everybody at this very special circular event. My name is Robert Jan van Ochtrop, founder and chairman of Circle Economy here in Amsterdam. We as Circle Economy are dedicated to doubling global circularity by 2030, measured by our own circularity gap report, which now indicates we're at only 8.6%. When enacted globally, the circular economy is a powerful tool to help mitigate climate change. As our economy is currently, as said, only 8.6% circular, and we're consuming 100 billion tons of materials annually, a radical change is desperately needed. Our current linear economy is firmly steering us towards a 3 to 6 degree temperature increase. If we continue business as usual, we will emit 65 billion tons of greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. Global warning, warming shows no signs of slowing down, and the reality is that certain vulnerable cities and countries will face catastrophes that threaten much of the population. Even if all of the 194 countries that signed the Paris Agreement fulfill their emissions, emissions cutting pledges, the rise in temperature is still forecast to hit 3.2 degrees this century. 70% of greenhouse gases emitted are directly linked to material handling and use, from extraction and transportation to processing and the use itself. So it's much more than the fossil fuels altogether, which everybody believes is the main driver. Now, the good news is that there is a solution to all these problems. Circular economy and circular society, which meets the needs of people in harmony with nature. It designs out waste and pollution, keeps products and materials in use, and regenerates natural systems. Going circular means nothing else than the way nature is meant to go. So let's go circular and make it happen. Good day and greetings from the Netherlands. My name is Joost de Kluiver and I represent a company called Closing the Loop. We're based here in the Netherlands in Amsterdam, so we're a proud partner of this conference, acting in a session and of course also participating in the whole conference. We're very much keen to see our government as many other organizations in the Netherlands and of course companies acting on circularity. Circularity is a topic that's on many organizations' agenda, but turning it into a topic that we can actually act on, create results uh, on, and of course also get people excited on, that's the challenge that I think especially Dutch organizations are really good at. So I'm proud to see that my government has taken a step to turn their circular ambition into action. And they're doing this specifically for electronics. As of this year, all devices that are bought by the national government of the Netherlands will be made waste neutral. This means that when a device such as a phone or a laptop is purchased for a civil servant, that device is compensated. You buy a new device, you collect an equivalent amount of electronic waste to compensate that new device. And as a result, your new electronic uh, device becomes waste neutral. Simple pragmatic, actionable. Not long-term solutions, but to get towards long-term solutions, we also need to act today. So pragmatism is something that I'm really proud of, seeing that to be a key topic for circularity in the Netherlands, also by my government. Mm -hmm.